Okay, the pedal, uh, you need to have uh, a spring, slack spring tension. The reason being, if you have this, uh, the pedal too tight, the spring, it's harder to get the fast beats. If you're getting like, groups fast, you know, like when you have a, a spring tight, it doesn't work as well. So in order to see that you have the spring slack enough, you can do this with the, the, the beater ball to make sure you get a few uh, kickbacks like that. If it doesn't go, you know, do anything, then you know it's too tight. So uh, that's a very important thing to do. Okay, that's one. Now the stem on the bass drum should be, I've got it measured at four and three quarter inches, <laughs> give or take an eighth of an inch. So the fact that the, the beater is high up enough to bring the beater back so you get the beats. If it's a shorter stem, it's, it's much harder to get, you know, if you're playing like eight beats. It's harder if you, if you have a short stem, you can't, there's nothing to work with. Kind of. It shouldn't be back here like that because it takes too long to get to the bass drum from here with this technique especially. And also you can get it caught in your pants, like, <laughs> which I've done before, you know, I do these things. So uh, it needs to be sitting, which you can deal with, with the, on the side of the pedal there. So all these things are very important. The slack spring tension, make sure you get enough rock backs, and the length of the stem of the beater ball, the beater. So I have a strange beater ball on here, which you probably notice. I saw the front off, which is not necessary, just an idiosyncrasy of mine. But I like to get a sharp sound from the bass drum. I mean, if you get it from this, from this side, that's nice, but this is better. You get it. Did that sound better? <laughs> I hope so. So, uh, but that has nothing to do with this at all. And plus the fact, notice I'm using a so solid footboard foot pedal. That has nothing to do with the technique at all. Um, I started the first 15, 16 years of this technique with a, a split hinge foot pedal. So it's just, I, I like this kind of pedal, that's all. But it has nothing to do with the technique. So, you know, wh whichever pedal you have is, is just fine. You need to be able to get, you know, the, the play from the pedal. That's, that's the idea. Also, I prefer a nylon strap for myself than the, the chain drive, just because it doesn't make any difference to the technique, but I prefer that. And uh, let, me, let me ask, yes. the, uh, the shoe, yeah, you have sneakers on now. Yes, I do. Uh, the reason I have these sneakers on is because I'm comfortable playing in these. Uh, the only thing not to wear is, is, is like sneakers with like thick you know, lumps on the bottom, because this technique of mine, I, I move the foot around. And you need to be able to, um, to move the foot. And if you have like thick lumps on there or, or heavy shoes, you know, heavy shoes. I have, have students that come in with those uh, big thick Herman Munster boots on. Uh, you can't feel the pedal with that. So the idea of feeling the footboard is, is the important thing, you know. So you need the kind of shoes to do that. The part of the footboard you should get the, be the best, best response from is right here. It's about four. Half here we go again with inches, four and a half inches down from the top, roughly. And that's where you get the best leverage. If you, if you, I see a lot of people playing right at the top of the pedal. You can feel if you press down with the stick or your finger, you can, uh, you can feel it's like a tight, it doesn't really work too well. Or down here, there's only one place for it to get a really good feel and that's right in, in there. You can see it just moves better. So once you, you know, get to terms with that, then there's the part of the foot that's very, very important, since you have the camera there. The very back of the toes is the, most, is the best part. I've gone through this scientifically, so I, I know this for a fact. Uh, I used to say the ball of the foot, which is okay. But um, this part of the foot, joined with this part of the pedal, gets the best response. So always remember that while you're going through these exercises, uh, you know, this part of the technique is very important to remember because it helps to, to get it done. You can have the ball, I, I, I tried both of it. I used to have the, say the ball of the foot, but I think the um, that part of the back of the toes is, is the best part, you know. That's what I get. But you know, you can try it. People can try it wherever they feel most comfortable with it and use that. But the very end of the toes, the very end of the toes or further back on the foot doesn't seem to work. I mean, I know a lot of guys do this, especially for, for playing louder stuff, which is, is cool. But for this technique, it doesn't really work. You'll see, you know, when you play these exercises, get into the technique further, you'll see the, the value of these things we've been going through. This is also a thing, where you, whatever you want it to be. But for myself, I like the heads to be pretty tight. 
and I like to get some boom out of it. The deader the head, the harder it is, the harder work it is to, to, to do this technique, especially when you go like that kind of stuff, because on a really dead head, it, you have to work harder. It can be done, but you know, it's harder work, and I'm all for making it easy myself.